Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at a little bit of a different video. Today we're going to take a look at some of the upcoming events for Pokemon Go. What's going to be interesting for mainly PvP but also for PvE of course and kind of want to check those one out. We're going to have two here right now. We're going to have the Otters Research Day which is going to be very interesting actually way better than I thought and also the Ultra Unlock Paldea which is going to start on Sunday this time around. So let's take a look at the Ultra Unlock first which is going to start from the 10th of September 10 a.m. till the uh, 15th of September till 10 a.m. as well, I think. So uh, we're going to take a look here right now at the Pokemon that are getting a debut here right now. We're going to have Nimble and Lockhex, uh, Dark and Bug type as well, as far as I know. We have Pommy, Pomo, and Pomod, which is actually interesting because it's going to be the first electric and fighting type Pokemon coming to the game, which is uh, definitely an interesting Pokemon in general. We have Bombardier, which is going to be a flying and dark type Pokemon. And then we're going to have the pseudo legendary of this generation, which is going to be Frigibex. Arctibax as well as Bex Calibor. So otherwise we're still going to have the 4 times XP and still the 4 times Stardust for catching. So that's going to be very nice as well as the Golden Stop still going to be the same as we had for the last 5 days. Very great event bonus, especially the Stardust is going to be amazing. Looking now at the rates again here we're going to see mainly one big change. It's going to be the Bombarder here as like a 3 star rate. I'm definitely going to try to showcase this Pokemon immediately as soon as I can. Um, but a uh, very interesting Pokemon in general as you're going to take a look now afterwards as well at what those Pokemon can do, those new Pokemon. Otherwise, the unknown shiny raid kind of got confirmed to 1 to 25, which is kind of cool. I saw like reports of 1 to 64 in the beginning, but it seems to be more like 1 in 25, so a 4% chance of getting a shiny unknown. It's still going to be Paldea as an unknown form there, so that's going to be interesting. We're going to have the swap as well now for... The um, Katana and the Celestila, which is also going to be interesting if you want to have the um, Katana C Celestila, definitely decent Pokemon and still Mega Manetric and Raids. What you're also going to have here are those wild spawns right now. We're going to have three new ones that you can go get into the wild here, which is going to be Nimble, Pommy, and Frigibex. Frigibex is going to be insanely rare, most likely comparable to Jangmo O last year, if you remember this one. I was able to get actually a Jangmo O like on the first day, I think, or the second day where this ever got released, but afterwards. I think I haven't seen one for like six, seven months. Now they seem to be a little bit more common in the recent season, so I definitely found a few more of them. But I would not expect to see Friggy Bags too often, like literally maybe like, yeah. Maybe if you go outside for two hours, you maybe find, find one of them or something. It's going to be a very rare Pokemon. So definitely going to try to showcase this Pokemon as well as soon as it's going to be available. Hopefully I'm going to be able to find one because it's actually going to be very interesting. So now let's take a look at some of the new Pokemon. First one, we're going to have here Lokix. So it's going to have the Bug as well as Dark type as far as I know. Which is going to have a little bit of a high attack stat here. Okay stamina and very low defense to be fair. Max AP 2000. 2619 D rank here because if you see the fast moves especially you're going to have bug bite and sucker punch both step but both are pretty horrific and you kind of want to have like kind of maybe a buff for sucker punch I would love to see for the upcoming season or whatever but um, those are not really that nice charge moves are okay but you would like to have something like night slash here but you have x scissor and dark pulse trailblaze and bug bus so let's take a look real quick at what this Pokemon can do here ultra league is going to be its best meta but sadly it's still going to be very hor like really really bad to be fair right now so it's definitely more of a pokedex entry candidate here Anything else is kind of too much for it, I feel like. So, definitely going to be an interesting Pokemon, though. Still, most likely going to showcase it because I showcase every new Pokemon on my channel. You know it already. But what I'm definitely going to showcase is going to be the Bombardier here. Bombardier? I don't know. But yeah, you're going to see it right now. Um, it gets up to 2,812 CP, which is interesting and has a very decent attack stat and same defense as well stamina, which is kind of interesting. There's not a mistake as far as I know. And you see, I put it as a B plus Pokemon here, which is very interesting. This Pokemon actually has a lot of potential. And the one reason for this is because it has the charge move Fly, which is a Drill Run clone, which I didn't even really know before. But Fly is a charge move that has been in the game for like a long time already. I think only Pikachu was really able to learn Fly. But this move itself is really strong. It's a really, really good... Um, 
flying type Pokemon, uh, like flying type move for those uh, Pokemon, like 45 energy and 80 damage, it is really, really nice. And also, you would have Aerial Ace if you want to, but like Fly is so much better than Aerial Ace in com compared, like with the damage output there. So you have five more energy for 25 more damage, I think, which is super great. So definitely, Fly is an amazing charge move to have on this Pokemon. Plus, Payback as a nuke option, and you see already it has 28 wins and 19 losses for the Ultra League, and it's also very decent for the Great League. So definitely get one for this one as well. So so this Pokemon actually has a lot of potential. I really like this Pokemon. It has the same typing as the Galarian Moltres, but Moltres is going to have a little bit better bulk, but Moltres doesn't have Fly, and Fly makes a huge difference in this kind of, um, yeah, comparison here right now. So definitely a very cool Pokemon to have, and definitely going to try to get this one, especially as you can get it as a shiny, but also very interesting for both Great and Ultra League. It's not going to be top meta, don't get me wrong, especially against like Steelix or whatever, it's going to be completely bad to use. Like it's going to be somewhere like mid-tier, I don't know, like, not like maybe top 100 or something for Ultra League, but it's definitely usable. Like, that's the thing. Like, it has a great moveset, doesn't really have the best sets, but has a great moveset and interesting typing. So, going to be interesting how good this Pokemon actually going to be. Now, we're going to have the Electric and Fang type paw mode or whatever, um, which is going to have an insanely high attack stat. You're going to see already 232 compared to 141 defense. Um, makes it an insane glass cannon. This is going to be insanely glassy in general. Uh, has a max CP of um, three th no, 2,978. I didn't actually put the rank in here, which I should have mostly done. I would put it around like the C tier, by the way. Forgot about this one, but yeah, should be C tier. And um, has the fast moves of Charge Beam, Low Kick, really, really bad. But Spark, which got kind of reworked, kind of to its disadvantage this time around because like Spark is fairly decent for like something like Lantern which is fairly bulky but you rather would like to have some more energy generation on a Pokemon like Palmont which is um, going to really appreciate energy generation as you're going to have a close combat, a wild charge, discharge as well as Thunderbolt as charge boost so you're going to have a very cool sweeper here. You see already it's not going to have the best stats or like um, yeah bulk product or anything like this for neither Ultra League or Great League for Ultra League it looks a little bit better but it's going to have close combat as well as wild charge which is going to do a ton of damage which you already know from um, the Zacian basically to nearly everything both are stabbed both going to do so much damage you're going to also cover for example against the um, flying type weakness of close combat for example then with the spark as well as the wild charge which is going to be nice so it's going to be a very interesting one here and I would expect that like nobody is going to use it other than me most likely but it's going to be an interesting Pokemon but it was also interesting to evolve this Pokemon for the mid stage to this stage you have to walk with your body 25 kilometer like you have to put it as your buddy in here walk 25 kilometer to get this pokemon so it's going to be a little bit of a task to get it actually but going to be an interesting one definitely going to try to get one for sure but let's move on to the most likely most interesting one for today which is going to be Bexcalibur. This Pokemon is going to get to 4,013 CP maximum. I saw some people saying, oh my god, this is going to be the best dragon type for the Master League and whatever, because before the max CP was like 4,700 uh, 4, or something, because Niantic didn't put the 9% nerf of it. That was kind of predictable that it get nerfed, so I was kind of... Why, like, why do we try to hype up a Pokemon that is not as hype as it was before? It's still a decent Pokemon, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to be the best Dragon-type Pokemon for the Master League. Like, I, I saw like some people talking about it, and I'm like, yeah, no. Maybe, maybe research a little bit more before saying something like this, but um, we got to have here a moveset that's actually fairly decent. We have the Avalanche, we have the Dragon Claw, we have Aldrich, and we have Blizzard. Very decent for this, especially with Dragon Breath as a fast move, as the best uh, fast move for Dragon types. It would have been cool if it would have had Powder Snow, because I feel like it would have made this Pokemon even in more interesting and more unique, to be fair. Because right now, with uh, Dragon Breath, uh, the Dragon Claw, and the uh, um, Avalanche, you're fairly similar to Curum. So if you want to really run it in the Master League, you always have to compare it to Curum, and um, while it's decent for the Master League, you really kind of only want to use it for... Honestly, a Master League Premier Cup, because Kyurem is just better in my opinion. Having um, the debuffing move, what's called uh, Glaciate, which is just a better Icy Wind, I, I don't know, I feel like Kyurem is just a better Pokemon to use. Like, But let me know in the comment section what you think about Bexcalibur, but I feel like it's not as great as people make it up to. It's like rank 20, I think, on PE Poke for Master League, so it's not bad, don't get me wrong, it's not bad. But it's not as great as, like, I don't know. I think Kyurem is still going to be better. But what we have to say real quick, which I can also show you in the next graph, which is going to be the priority list for this first event, 
is that we kind of want to get the Friggy backs because the mid-stage evolution is actually one of the coolest Pokemon for the Great League. So the mid-stage evolution is definitely something that you kind of want to have for that. It's like top 60 or something on the Great League tier list, which makes it really interesting because, um, yeah, it's going to be a very decent Pokemon there. It still has Avalanche, still has Dragon Breath, still has Dragon Claw, gets to around 1,900 um, bulk points there for the Great League, which is really decent as well. So it's going to be kind of like Swilers, for example, for the Great League. Very interesting Pokemon. So definitely mid-stage Pokemon is there very decent. We put those starters a little bit lower because, um, yeah, like we had them already for a week. I just kind of made them a little bit of a tier list. The fire starter, the best one. The duck is the second best one. And then the kitty is sadly the worst. We're going to have in the lowest tier, of course, some Pokemon that are really not usable. Like the Clevo from Raid, for example, is not really usable right now. Nimble is just sadly horrific, so it's C tier. A little bit better as Paw Mode, and of course, the um, new flying type Bombardier is on the A tier, in my opinion, for like what you kind of want to hunt for during this event. Of course, still, the Jumpluff is a very strong Pokemon for the Great League. Now, also has access to Aerial A, so you don't even really need the um, Acrobatics on it. Acrobatics is still a little bit better, though. We have actually Manetric. Some people complained about me putting this into D tier, but it actually is, I guess, the best rate attacker as a um, um, electric type like mega electric type basically so um i don't really like it because it's single type and i rather would like to boost some candy bonus for me like my guess i mean the candy bonus not that much for like beating opponents or like beating great bosses so for that reason i put it a little bit low but still people said it's the best one for electric so i definitely put it a little bit higher up but yeah this is kind of the tier list for this one we can move on now real quick into the oddish research day which is a very fast one real quickie as well which is going to allow us to get oddish of course from feed research which you always had and had a higher shiny chance which is usually i think like one in one in ten or something one in ten shiny chance usually i think from research day so and definitely a solid way to get some shiny Oddish, maybe even a Shando if you're lucky. We're gonna get two times Stardust, which is really cool as well. It's going to be on the 17th of September, as you can see there, from 2 to 5 p.m., um, which is going to be actually really cool that we have two times Stardust, which you're gonna see later on. And we're gonna have the higher sh chance of XXS and XXL Pokemon. We're gonna have also the um, what's called the showcases for this Pokemon available at the same time, which does make sense then that we have XXS and XXL from them. But we're also going to have uh, that Oddish can now hold the Sunstone which is going to be interesting. Of course, we needed to evolve the Oddish into the Blossom, but also we had like similar th stuff already happening for Rayquaza, which was able to hold a Meteorite. So now Niantic basically gave us the option for Pokemon to hold certain items, which they might want to expand on for the future, which I find is a very cool update and something that I actually didn't know that they could do this yet, but that's going to be very interesting. Definitely something that I would want to see in the future for a few Pokemon that they maybe hold some items, so it's maybe a little bit rewarding to get like certain Pokemon. That would be really cool to see, but let's take a look real quick at the wild spawns here, which is the main thing for this event, to be fair. Not so many very decent ones for the um, for PvP in general. Rosalia, Rosalia is kind of nice, so I didn't even make a tier list for this one. But what you kind of really want to have is uh, Paris, Shroomish, and Fungus. Those Pokemon give you extra Stardust, and this extra Stardust plus two times Stardust going to be amazing for you to get some more starters as well of course now we're going to have still five more days afterwards um for the next event with like four times starters but two times starters plus um extra starters from paris fungus and shroomish might be really decent so definitely try to hunt those down but yeah that's going to be it for this short video about the upcoming events hope you enjoyed it if you did feel free to leave a like and i'll see you then bye bye